Hello, I am Councilwoman Salandia Hammond, affectionately known as Sue Ham. And to the Snow Hill community, I want to say happy Juneteenth. The day was recognized as a federal holiday on June 17, 2021, when President Joe Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law. Juneteenth's commemoration is the anniversary date of the June 19, 1865 announcement of General Order No. 3 by Union Army General Gordon Granger proclaiming freedom for enslaved people in Texas, which was the last state of the Confederacy with institutional slavery. This time commemorates African Americans' freedom and emphasizes education and achievement. It is a day, a week, and in some cases, the entire month, marked with celebrations, guest speakers, picnics, and family gatherings, much like the one we're having today. It is a time for reflection and rejoicing, a time for assessment, self-improvement, and planning for the future. Its growing popularity signifies a level of maturity and dignity in America that is long overdue. In cities across the country, people of all races, nationalities, and religions are joining hands to truthfully acknowledge a period in our history that has shaped us and continues to influence our society. Sensitized to the conditions and experiences of others, only then can we make significant and lasting improvements in our society. On today, we also extend love and support to one in our community, Ms. Sharon Montgomery, who along with her family is experiencing just a bit of a valley experience at this time. But we want she and her family to know that they are not alone and that in accordance with John 13, 34, we love her as God so loved us. Amen. At this time, we will now have our greeting by Minister Emmy Hilton, followed by our invocation by Bishop Roosevelt Fulton. Greetings and good afternoon on this special day. I wouldn't miss this special day for anything because not only known them for a long time, but family also. And when they say greetings, we greet them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the joy and the peace that you would give them today because we couldn't do it without the Father. We sit high on the stand of his Son on the right side. I want you to know today that we greet you and we thank you for the hearts and mind and soul for you coming out this day. And continue to bless, let ask God to bless, blessing anything that you do, that he will put his loving arms around this family right here and continue to bless over and over and again. And we thank you and we greet you again in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Maybe we all bow in prayer to acknowledge the Lord who all our help has come from. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. We thank you for the gift of life, the privilege of living, and the opportunity to serve. Oh, God, it's from your hands we come all blessings. We thank you, Father, yes. for it right now. Mm -hmm. Lord, we need you this hour. We need you, Lord, for this day. We pray, Lord, for this occasion. We pray for, oh God, the peace of the world is troubled on every hand. Father, we pray for this nation, for this country. We pray for the leaders of that country. God, they can do nothing without you. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. 
Thou art a sovereign God. You have all powers in your hand. You have the right and authority to control everything that you have made. Today we look to you because we need you. We thank you because without your uh, mercy we are not consumed. Your compassion fills us not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. We ask for God to look upon each and every one that come out to this occasion this evening. Pray that you will bless everyone. We thank you, Lord, for them. For God showing their love and support. Continue to bring us together. Continue to unite us together. Oh, God, with brotherly love. Help us to love one another with the love of God. Have mercy. We come against the forces of evil, every evil cause, every hindering of God. We come against it right now. We plead your blood against it because you shed your blood for us. You made a way for us. God, we thank you. We praise you for it. We ask for God to look upon the sick ones. For God, those that are dealing with issues in their body. You are our healer. You are our Jehovah Rapper. God, that healed thee. Forgive our sins and heal this land. God, for all these things, we give your name, praise, glory, and honor. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Paula Morris. I'm from Lake City, and um, Mr. Cunningham was at the um, Fraser Baker, Baker Memorial that I started doing in Lake City, and I don't know whether y'all are familiar with Fraser Baker, but another time for that. Um, and he said that when he has something here, he wanted me to come. Well, I didn't really know what he wanted me to do today, but I found out after I look at the program. And I want to be real about June 19th. I didn't know about June 19th until some young people in our community a couple of years ago, decided to do a march in Lake City for June 19th. And that's when I began to know what June 19th was. And so now today, as we are here to celebrate, and the devotional book that I'm passing out, if you want one, I have some over there. And it says this, it says, even though it would be, takes 13th, the 13th Amendment to formally end slavery, Juneteenth, Celebration, sometimes called Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, and Liberation Day, flowed from Texas, spread across the nation, and continued the present. This fair holiday marks a fresh cause for rejoicing over recount and reaffirming equality and blessings of freedom for all. More than restoring a nation to its commitment to all proclaiming liberty is a spiritual activity affecting every individual. The prophet Isaiah delivered, delivered God's word for those held in physical as well as spiritual bondage thousands of years ago. When the scripture says the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captive and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor in Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. One thing I like about Juneteenth is I read this, it said it is a spiritual celebration. So my hats are off to Mr. Cunningham who are following the guidelines. Because so many times we can take things that are supposed to be spiritual and turn it into worldly. And I know that God is not pleased with it. So the days I stand before you, I thank God for freedom. And we are still fighting for freedom. But I thank God that we've come this far by faith. And I know we still have ways to go. And I believe that until the end of time comes, we're still going to be pursuing that. But I thank God that we are not where we used to be. And we are moving forward to be better. I thank God that we are coming together as black, white, Hispanic, in unity, other race, in unity. Because the Lord says, the Bible says in Psalms 133, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to, the brethren, listen at that, now brethren to dwell together in unity. Brethren means those who are in Christ. And if we can't be in unity, how do we expect for the world to be in unity? So I just want to say to you today, as we celebrate Juneteenth, don't let it stop here. Don't let it stop here. Don't let's do this today and then forget about it. But in our churches, 
in our homes, in our schools. We need to be coming together as one. How are we going to defeat the enemy? We're going to defeat him in our oneness. So I say to you today that I'm glad that all of you are here. And I pray that, that this will be a continued celebration in this community and that we will come together and celebrate our Lord and Savior for what he has, what he has brought us from and where he's taken us to. My blessing is for you, and I pray that God continue to strengthen you. Um, I don't know a couple, I don't, I don't even know what's going on, but I know Good evening, everyone. And I'm sure everyone's looking at me and wondering who that guy is. Well, my good friend, greetings, greetings, greetings. My good friend, our historian, one of our best historians in South Carolina, Mr. George Fryson, told me about this event. Reverend Cunningham invited me to this event. So I'm here, and I'll tell you exactly who I am. My name is Jack Spann. I'm the mayor of the lovely town of Pinewood, South Carolina. So greetings from Pinewood, South Carolina, which sits on the border, which sits in Sumter County, on the border of Clarendon County. And, and all South Carolina has a lot of history, but down there we have a lot of good history. Briggs versus the Board of Education. Uh, the Joyce Stinney case, Mr. Fryson was very influential in uh, working that to some great fruition to exonerate them. But as it relates to Juneteenth, I, I believe Mr. Fryson wanted me to come down here and I brought this folder, but I'm not even going to open it. Uh, I believe Mr. Fryson wanted me to come down here and let you guys, let everyone here know who I am as it relates to Juneteenth and Reconstruction. Amen. I am the great great grandson of Gerald Jared D. Wally. Jared D. Wally was the first black senator, well, House of, member of the House, he was in the House of Representatives from 1870 to 1874. He served in the Senate from 1874 to 1877. He was the black, first black senator from Clarendon County, South Carolina. I am a direct descendant from him and serving now as the mayor of the lovely town of Pinewood, South Carolina, which borders Sumter County and Clarendon County, which used to fall in Clarendon County. So uh, I'm one, I guess I, I'm one of those, uh, one of those dreams that our ancestors had, because as we know, Reconstruction probably, uh, Mr. Fryson will correct me, only lasts about 10 years. And after the 10 years, things drastically change for many of us in the United States of America, but especially in the South. So with that said, uh, going back to Jared D. Wally, Jared D. Wally uh, had um, during that time, we had a lot of representation from the state of South Carolina. The state of South Carolina had a lot of black or uh, African American House and Senate members. We also sent about 12 or 13 members, members to the U.S. Uh, Congress uh, to act as senators. Everyone recalls uh, Senator Smalls who took this ship and sailed it to the Union's uh, fort. Everyone remembers him well. Well, we had many more, and my great-great-grandfather, Jared D. Wally, was one of those. He faced a lot of opposition coming from the area he came from. He had, um, I, I believe it was E.E. E. Dick, Dickens, who challenged his seat um, at the South Carolina General, General Assembly uh, on one occasion. 
But on another occasion, he was well noted because it's, it's and this is all written in the uh, state of South Carolina legislators information, uh, documentation. Uh, my great great grandfather had to uh, testify before the U.S. Congress, the Senate, because during the election for the senator from our area, there was a proposition made on all the senators, and the proposition was a, an amount of $400. And I'm thankful that my great-great-grandfather turned down that proposition and he stood by honor and, 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 and doing the right thing during a very difficult time. Sadly, sadly to say, in 1877, our parties were a little bit different, so uh, we're not going to get into that right now, but I'll let you say our party is the Democratic Party took over uh, the state of South Carolina and my grandfather resigned. So that is the portion of Reconstruction. It relates directly into Juneteenth. He, he was a slave, he was slave then he, as a, doing emancipation, he was emancipated. He was a farmer. He was a judicial magistrate. He was a he was an AME minister, and he also served on the legislative served as chairman of the legislative library for the state of South Carolina. So a lot took place, and a lot of great men represented our state. And in 2007, 2000, 2008, the state of South Carolina record. Uh, recognized all of those uh, individuals with an act that was published. Uh, so again, just came to say and just came to let you see who I am and Mr. George Fryson will definitely give you an outstanding speech because he is more a more powerful historian but I'm just a, a generational uh, dream of my family that uh, my great-great-grandfather uh, represented us very well during his time in the House and the Senate. So well, thank you for letting me come up here for a few, few, brief few moments. And again, greetings from the lovely town of Pinewood, South Carolina. And I'm happy to be here. Sorry I got lost. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, this is a joyous occasion. And like many others, uh, you know, coming from the great big city of Lancaster, South Carolina, representing the South Carolina uh, Black, uh, Caucus of Black School Board members, I got a little lost. <laughs> Thank goodness for the four-way stop restaurant, right, or our convenience store who gave us a little bit more direction and said, when you smell the fish, you will know you're in the right area. <laughs> this is a great day because we remember Juneteenth, and someone already said it was all, it's also known as Freedom Day. It is known as Liberation Day and Emancipation Day. But we also want to remember today, at this moment, at this time, I declare in Greeleyville that this is Community Love Day. We remember that emancipation, while it certainly free those who were enslaved, it was not without many people who supported the Underground Railroad, many people who hid slaves as they found their way to the North for freedom. Teaching, learning, and discussing the history of Juneteenth in our school communities is critical to understanding who we are as a nation. This is part of the caucus ongoing commitment to, to be culturally responsive and sustaining towards education. 
providing our students with the opportunity to see themselves and their history in the lessons and materials of their education. Very quickly, to our guest speaker, featured speaker, Mr. Frierson, I want to thank you for all you've done, not only as a historian for the community you serve, but for the state of South Carolina, and particularly for the South Carolina Caucus of Black School Board members, which you are a founding member. I also want to thank you for encouraging me to learn more about my history. You see, because Mr. Frierson said, little brother, you need to find out who you are, I recently discovered that like the previous speaker, I am only four generations from slavery. Just four. It caused me to pause and reflect on where we are today. And I want to encourage each of you in your personal and professional lives to be intentional about diversity, to seek equity, and to make sure we're open to inclusiveness. Thank you for your time. As we do have a speaker that is coming. I apologize, Mary, we need to pull a cord or something. I, uh -huh. I, I coughed as loud as I could without people thinking I had COVID. <laughs> We will now have the introduction of the speaker by Ms. Lydia Fulton, followed by a selection by Ms. Loretta Easterling, after which the next voice that you will hear will be that of Mr. George Frierson, historian from Appaloo, South Carolina. Greetings, thank you to everyone on this evening. We really thank the Lord for it the, today, amen. In all things, we ought to give God thanks, amen. 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 We're not going to prolong the time. We're going to introduce the speaker, none other than the Honorable George Frierson III. He was born December the 9th, 1962, in Alpha South Carolina. He's the youngest of six children born to the late Charlie Frierson and Lee Ola Pringle Frierson. He was educated in the public schools of Clarendon County, South Carolina. He holds a college degree in accounting and business management. He served in the U.S. Army where he has an honorable discharge. He's a lifelong member of Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church of Alpha, South Carolina. He's the lead advocate in the exploration of George Steine Jr. The youngest executed, he placed George Steine Jr. Hope Stone in Alcaloo on Saturday, Saturday, four, June 14, 2014. In 2015, um, he earned the Social Justice Award, 2018 Humanitarian Award for Civil Rights. He has a Lifetime Achievement Award. He is an archivist of Maysville Museum and Mary McLeod Bethune Learning Art and Center and Art Gallery. And his favorite hobby is reading, reading, reading. I present to you the Honorable George Fryson III. Thank you, Ms. Fulton. You know, you know, you gave me 10 extra years because you said I was born in 62. <laughs> I was born in 52, my dear. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad. If, if that's going to add 10 more years to me, I'm glad. <laughs> Reverend Darby, God, only God can make the court go backwards, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm thankful and I'm, I'm honored by Brother Cunningham, who uh, asked me to come on this occasion. I am. Uh, Audibly discharged from the United States military during the Vietnam conflict. And I say that because Vietnam was never actually declared a war. So I lost 58,220 of my fellow Americans in a holy sanction. I want you to think about that now. It was a holy sanction, and 58,220 of our fellow Americans died in a police action, average age 
18 and a half to 20 and a half on a police action. I, um, I was thinking the day I was going to start out, but I'd like to go back as Reverend um, <coughs> Hilton said, I'd like to go back to the spirit. And I want to say this to pastors because I'm a state chaplain. When we minister to people, we got to minister first to the physical. If a man is hungry, he want to feed himself. Okay. Then we got to minister to the mind. James says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And then if you get that fertile ground, as Jesus said, to go out and the seed, sow went out to sow seeds, when you get that fertile ground, then you can minister to the Spirit. And in saying that, uh, James says another thing, he said, remember now, faith without words is dead. Huh? Dead. Is dead. I want to take the time out first to honor one of my co-activists, Attorney Eliezer Collins. Stand up, Eliezer. You heard her refer to the George Stinnett Jr. case. And for ten and a half years, God placed a burden on me as a historian where a 14-year-old child was electrocuted on Friday, June the 16th, 1944, at the age of 70, 14 years, 7 months, and 26 days old. He was from Alcaloo, South Carolina. And look at how God worked. I was born in Alcaloo. And she mentioned my birthday. I was born on December the 9th, 1952. And that day it has national significance. Not only because that was the day I was born now, y'all. <laughs> that was the day that Brown versus the Board of Education was argued before the United States Supreme Court. That day. Now, why was Leola Fryson was in Alcaloo having trouble having a funny looking little dude? <laughs> there was important things going on in Washington, D.C. And I want you to know out of the five cases that were combined to make Brown versus, versus the Board of Education, the first case was Briggs v. Elliott, filed on the 16th of May of 1950, Summerton, Clarendon County, South Carolina. All right, the first of the five cases was from South Carolina, specifically Summerton. And on last Saturday night, we had an incident where there was a graduation party at a house. Someone came up and shot 60 to 70 shots in a house. Eight people were shot. One fatally who turned out to be the 32 year old mother of five who was actually buried today. We have five children ages 1 to 12 no longer has a mother. We got to stop the violence. And as I was sitting there, my phone was buzzing and ringing Dr. Stephanie Coney, who is actually the director of the National Stop the Violence Alliance, will be in, well, she's already in, in uh, South Carolina. She will be in Clarendon County on Monday between the hours of 1 and 3 at Scotch Branch High School. And so that invitation was before I even knew that there was a killing. She called me 9.40 last Sunday when we were going back to my in faith service in my church for the first time in two years plus. She called me at 9.40. She said, Mr. Friday, I'm pretty sure you're getting ready for church. I said, I sure am. <laughs> she said, well, I want you to know I'll be in South Carolina the 12th, 13th, and 14th. So now she's calling me, and I'll call her back when I leave. Let me know she's in Sumter, and she wants to meet me because we've known each other for a while, but we have never physically met. Why? There is one race, the human race. Let us not let people with devious designs divide us. Now I'm looking at what's going on in this nation. Now my DD 214 says K 
character of service, it says all of us. Okay, that's what it says. Very few members in Congress right now today has ever served in our, our, our military. Mr. Strober, our caucus president, he is a military veteran. Well, Mayor um, Flynn and Attorney Carter, they are both veterans, so there are at least four of us out here. How many more veterans we got? Okay. Now, y'all took an oath, we all took an oath to the Constitution, right? That's right. I mean, did y'all take an oath to anything other than the Constitution? <laughs> huh? Now, some of you may have former Confederates in your family. Now let's just be real. I'm going to Western Tower, okay? The definition of the word treason is one who violates or takes an oath to a foreign government. Now, whether your four parents were right or wrong, or whatever their intentions were, they took an oath to another, a, another government. And it cost 800 to a million, 800,000 to a million of our ancestors to die in a stupid war. The word says that we are created in the image of God. That is what it says, right? It says God took the dust of the earth and made man and blew the breath of the Lord knife into his nostril and man became a living. Now that's what I read. Anybody read anything other than that? Nobody read nothing other than that, right? Okay, so we are one people. One people. Now, I pulled this up for a reason. Right in Columbia, South Carolina, how many of y'all know where Allen University is? Next door to Allen University is St. Martin the Porter's Catholic Church and School. How many of y'all know that St. Martin the Porter's was a black man? That's a picture of him. Okay. And I'm just saying, when you don't know, you don't know. I was a senior at East Clarendon High School, 1970 to 71. That year, there were two buses turned over in Lamar, South Carolina. Two buses turned over. Students had miraculously escaped. But hate turned over two buses that had children on it. I was scared. We were all scared. We didn't know how that was going to end. Okay? <laughs> and God blessed us that nothing went extreme. But that happened. March the 3rd, 1970, Lamar, South Carolina, the Lamar Riot. You can pull it up. I see some of y'all got laptops. That happened during my senior year. And we were scared. There are things that invoke fear. The unknown usually invokes fear. Any man say he's never been afraid as a fool. All right? Any man or woman. We talking about voting. This gentleman here, this is Captain Paul Cuffey, born in 1759 in Cuddy Hook, Massachusetts. Captain, I call him Captain because that's what he was. He was a mariner. Captain Cuffy was an extremely wealthy man. And he took a trip over to Africa to take people back. Well, some people still say you need to go to Africa. I've never lived in Africa. I was born in Akalu. So I can't go back home unless I go back to Akalu. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying we had people saying that. And so this man and several others got together to say, all right, if we can't vote, we won't pay no taxes. Is that what the American Revolutionary War was about? Taxation without representation. Well, did y'all learn that in school? Yeah. So this man and his brothers and things, they say, well, if we can't vote, we ain't paying no taxes. One thing about the dollar bill, it talks, even when it's silent. It talks, right? It screams. It screams. I like that too. 
I also went a little further because I dig all the time. Now, the oldest living woman in the world that's recorded was 122 years old. But I got the, the death record of a lady that was born in 1790. She died on July the 21st, 1917. Y'all do the math. She was born in 1790. She died on July 21st, 1917. What was her age at death? 127. 127. I have I have her death certificate here. I didn't believe it. So I went to the archives in Columbia. I said, this must be a mistake. Man said, Mr. Price, that ain't no mistake. She was born in 1790, and we definitely know when she died. 127 years old. And guess where she was from? A little place called Summerton, Clarendon County, South Carolina. She lived to be 127 years old. Isn't that gracious of God? Amen. But guess what her vocation was? She was a midwife. Can you imagine how many babies that lady delivered? Living to be 127 years old in something in Clarendon County? What a blessing. What a blessing from God. And her name was Tisman Thomas. Now, we talking about Juneteenth. Now, there was an, era, an age called the antebellum period in South Carolina. That means leading up to the Civil War. All right? And we know what happened in 1822 down at Mother Emanuel. Then Mark Vesey and 131 others were uh, actually accused of insurrection. And they were hanged, some of them. Vesey was, Vesey was a free man. And the only thing he wanted was to free his family. That's all he wanted. And they hung him. Now at Mother Emmanuel is the second oldest AME church in the world, okay? Behind Bethel in Pennsylvania. So at that time, the pastor was Morris Brown. Have y'all ever heard of the name Morris Brown? Got universities in Atlanta and stuff named Morris Brown. Well, the authorities, the powers to be, was going to hang Bishop Morris Brown, the second AME bishop. But God intervened. Bishop 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 um, Morris Morris Brown went and fled to Pennsylvania, and he lived to 1849. Now, in Charleston, South Carolina, there was a, a battle. It's, it's depicted in the movie Glory. How many of y'all have ever seen the movie Glory? Y'all have seen that movie? Well, that's a dramatization of a real event that happened on Saturday, July the 18th, 1863 in, at Fort Wagner in Charleston, South Carolina. And at that battle, the first black man to ever be recommended for the Medal of Honor Sergeant Major William Harvey Connick actually scooped the flag before he hit the ground because the flag bearer had been shot. And going up there above, man, he got shot. And the call came to retreat. He's retreating and he got shot. So he got shot going up the hill and coming down the hill. And when they asked him, he said, well, how did you do it? He said, well, by, basically by the grace of God. He said, well, I can tell you one thing. He said, Old oh, Glory never touched the ground. When he said, Old oh, Glory, he meant the flag. That's right. He said, Old oh, Glory never touched the ground. A soldier, well, a military person, because my grandson is a Marine. His granddaddy don't call me no soldier now. <laughs> so, so it is what it is. But uh, again, we in the military. We have sworn an oath to the Constitution that is symbolized by the flag. Okay? And we take precious, we take precious accord to the flag. Now, they say, everyone, well, you know, a man got freedom of expression. I, I'm appalled by someone who burns the American flag. I'm appalled by that because of the people who have died under that flag. 
But now if the Supreme Court, nine unelected people, if they say that's the law of the land, well, I, I know how to abide by the law. But I, 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 it's a reprehensible act that notice somebody burning the American flag. Because in Vietnam, 58,220 of my fellow Americans died in that police action. So it's reprehensible to me. Well, right here in Williamsburg County, there was a guy that actually served in the Civil War. His name was Stephen Atkins Swales. Stephen Atkins Swales was born on February the 23rd, 1832 in Columbia, Pennsylvania. He died on the 17th of May, 1900, King Street, South Carolina. He's buried at the Humane and Friendly Society Cemetery, Cunnington Avenue in Charleston, South Carolina. I have visited Mayor Swales, because we have a mayor out here. So this was a mayor doing what we call reconstruction. And this is a picture of Stephen Atkins Swales. Now, I'm showing y'all this picture because he can pass, he could pass. Okay, he could pass. Huh? No, he was very light-skinned. His daddy was a black man, his mother was a white female. So he was considered by part of Secretary Ventrum that was brought into our doctrinal society of doctrine in 1664 in the Commonwealth of Virginia. It says that if your mother is black, then you black. But not only that, then you are a slave and she's a slave. That was a doctrine. So that those white plantation owners impregnated their black enslaved women could have children by their black enslaved women and would not have to own up to them. Now it's a sorry man that will not recognize his own seed. That's a sorry man. And while I'm there, if I can take it out, my mother and my father separated and she was pregnant with me. Okay, he left and he went to Baltimore. And uh, I took exception to the fact that Maybe he didn't care for me. So I really didn't have that kind of passion for my father. And in 1979, my mother came and knocked on the door. She said, George, she said, Charlie died. I said, and? <laughs> she said, well, they're going to have this, we call it a sitting up, some people call it a visitation. She, they, she said, well, they're going to have this visitation in Baltimore on Thursday night. I said, and? She said, well, I'm planning on going up there to support my children. I said, well, have a good trip. <laughs> she looked me squarely in the eye. She said, let's get this straight. She said, what happened between me and Charlie had nothing to do with you. I said, well, be safe. She looked me dead in the eye. She said, I'll tell you what, I know he your daddy. She said, if you want to do it for him, do it for me. The only reason I live in South Carolina is because of my bill, I thought anyway. Because all of my siblings live in Massachusetts. I'm the only one that lives in South Carolina. And I thought I was staying here because of her, but God had another mission for me to do with the Stinny case that I had no idea about, okay? So sometimes God has future plans for us. And let's not muddy up the past and mess up the road. I listen at Representative Liz Cheney last night, well, Thursday night, rather, she said something. She said, my fellow Republicans, she said, now, don't dishonor yourself, I think, was she, I, 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 I'm going to paraphrase her. She said, there will come a day when Donald Trump will be gone. She said, but your dishonor will remain. Because there are historians like me that are yet to tell the story. Now that thing about critical race theories in school. Let me tell you what critical race theory, we got an attorney out here. Critical race theory is a course that's taught in college to people majoring in law. Not all college uh, students take critical race theory. So only those that are majoring in law. No public school in this state at the secondary level teaches that, no public school. 
and I'm speaking as the former chairman of the Clan of Three Board of Trustees. So when somebody can start a lie and we keep the lie going, I don't know where that came from, but well, we ain't gonna preach critical race theory. That's kind of like saying we ain't gonna grow up. And I gotta say this because I was the a senior the very first year of forced integration. I was a junior at Walker Gamble School in New Zion, an all black school, but I was a senior at East Clarendon and integrated school. And I told y'all about the bus and we got scared, right? And our teachers got a few of us together and we talked. We said, look, history will, will, will record what we are gonna do. And one thing, the only thing that all of us own in here, the only thing, one thing you own is your name. It follows you in life and death. Remember that now. I had a young 24 year old who came up to me and said, Mr. George said, you trying to clear George Stanley Jr. name? He said, what good is it gonna do him? I asked the question, I said, well, you ever heard of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? She said, yeah, I know him. I said, oh no, you didn't know him. I said, well, I was 15 years old when he got assassinated, so you didn't know him. You heard about him. And I go in prison sometime and I speak. And I tell the young people that are there. I said, now, I don't know why you're here. I don't know why you're here. But I dare there's something I do notice. You don't have your name on. You have a number. I have yet to see a living number. So the act of assigning a number to you, it dehumanizes you. So when I hear you bragging about going to jail, you accept and being dehumanized. Is that a good argument? Is that a good argument? I want to show you all one more thing because, now don't ever let a historian get to talking, okay? <laughs> Yeah, okay, and it's just like an energizer bunny. It's like, like an energizer bunny. I want to show y'all a picture here. There's seven people in this picture. All of these are South Carolinians. There are seven people, okay? All of them are South Carolinians. Now, six of them are related by blood. If you can see, here are three brothers. There's their mother, there's their grandfather, and two of their aunts. Okay? Three of the people in the picture are white. All right? The grandfather and the two aunts are white. The boys are mixed, and the mother is black. Now remember, I said six of them are related by blood. Okay, the boys, of course, if they are full-blooded brothers, they are related by blood, right? They're related to their mother by blood, right? Their mother, who is she related to? Only them, right? She's only, so out of the six people that are related by blood is the three boys, the grandfather who is white, and the two mothers, um, two aunts that are white. So I give you this picture because these are the Gripke sisters and brothers that were born in Charleston, South Carolina. They were a white family that did not believe in slavery. Their grandfather owned slaves. Well, their father, the boys' grandfathers owned slaves. They owned them, right? So again, here is a family of six, a family of seven. Six of them are related by blood. And I show you all this family. This is my family. My grandmother, my great grandmother, who was Cherokee Indian, excuse me, she was a Catholic. My grandfather, who was her son, who was mixed, because his father was a black man. My mother's mother, she was a black woman. My mother, of course, was mixed, because her father was mixed with Indian, and her mother was black. Well, that means there's something in me other than black, right? Huh? <laughs> Now, when you look at me, do you see any ending in me? <laughs> I want to thank y'all. I want to thank y'all, and I, I, I just want to say, let's get out and vote. Let's get out and vote because the way you 
the way your voice is heard is through your vote. And as a surrogate for Dr. Gary Burgess running for State Superintendent of Education, Dr. Burgess has served as a classroom teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, assistant superintendent, superintendent of Anderson School District 4, and he currently sits on the Anderson County Board of Education as the board secretary. So we kept, had these, all of these politicians before running for the superintendent of education. Let's get an educator. Vote for Dr. Gary Burgess that you can find in the yard. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fryerson. Let's please give him another round of applause. I think something has been learned by everyone that is seated here. We will now have a selection by Ms. Loretta Easterling, and if anyone should need to use the restroom where, where you've been sitting for quite some time, you may go to the home, the mobile home on the back and go inside of there. <laughs> the trailer house. <laughs> oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am so glad to be here. Mr. Cunningham told me to come. And, well, like I say, it, I didn't know it was going to be campaigning and all this. But anyway, <laughs> I am here to speak a, a word or two about Miss Sharon Montgomery. Um, we worked together for years. Another one of my co-workers, Miss Lily B. Woods, I would like for her to come up at this time too, because of, of both of us worked with Miss Montgomery. She was my manager at King Street Elementary School, and I became a manager under her. So we all were at King Street Elementary School in the cafeteria, and I'm just here to say a few words about Miss Sharon and. I don't have a special presentation, which is, I did, I brought a card, but I put it in the box. But I just wanted to say to Ms. Sharon, God is good, and God is with us all of the time. He never leaves us alone. Even when we think that we are alone, He is there all the time. So just keep in mind that God is with you, and we are praying for you. When I heard about your illness, it shocked me. It really shocked me. But I was praying for you the whole time after I heard about it, and I'm going to continue to pray for you and your family. So just keep your hand in God's hand, and he will take care of you. Ms. Woods might have one or two words, because she says she's not a great speaker, but she might have one or two words she would like to say to you and your family. And I know Sharon for many years, not only know her, she is my cousin, but she's been my manager. We go way back. We family friends. And all I have to say, Sharon, let's hang in there. Let's hang in there. Thank you too, man. That's right. Thank you. All right, so like I said, God is with you. Never forget. God is with you. Just keep your hand in his hand and you'll be all right. Thank you all very much. God be the glory. I thank God for such a special occasion. Hats off to Mr. Cunningham for putting together, like Mr. Book said, something that we have never really focused on in Grillyville. But I thank him for pulling it off and hats off to you, Mr. Cunningham. Job well done. And now, um, when I was on my way home Thursday afternoon, I got a phone call. Um, Dr. Wilder called and asked me, she said, I want you to prepare one of those special baskets that you usually do for a very special person. And when she told me who it was, I said, oh, sure I can do that. Because I worked with Sharon. Sharon and I worked together at Greeleyville Elementary. Then she went over to the district and she started fixing something called an Oprah Perlo. <laughs> I have never eaten okra and rice cooked together like that. But and once she put it together, you'll never stop eating. <laughs> and I have never found anyone else to fix it quite like Sharon. And Sharon, the only thing I want to say to you that on behalf of Dr. Rose Wilder, our superintendent, and the Williamsburg County School District, we want to present you with this lovely basket full of all kinds of things. She told me to put it together. And I did it for a special person. And I just want to say, God is with you. And just take it from me, Sharon. God is a healer. I know him to be a healer. I'm not talking about something I read. I'm talking about something I know. 
something I went through in the last two years. But let me tell you, God brought me out on the other side. And he's going to do the same for you. So once again, on behalf of Dr. Rose Wilder and the Waynesburg County School District, we love you. We're just a phone call away. If you need us, don't hesitate to call. Thank you all so much. Enjoy your day. I would just like to say thank you. Um, these are two special people. I've known them all my life. And before I get excited, the scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually to be in my mouth. We are grateful for Juneteenth, but we're grateful for what his son done for us at Calvary. We can't forget that. And I've heard different ones were saying that um, about what their purpose was. But I know one thing. If the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name will lumber themselves and seek my face, turn, pray, he'll heal the land. And I believe that. You know, sometimes they took the prayer out of, but I'm so glad I'm on my own property. <laughs> Bishop uh, Fulton, do you mind coming up a minute? Uh, Pastor uh, Underwood, do you mind? We're going to ask them to give us a short prayer. We're going to ask Bishop to pray for our nation. And then we're going to ask Pastor Phyllis to pray for the violence. Um, I was just devastated when I heard the, about Texas. I woke up the next morning driving to Raleigh, North Carolina, trying to get to my grands. You know, sometimes we it don't is we don't take part because it don't it's not involving our family. That's right. A few weeks ago, there was two young men that got shot down in in, in Williamsburg County in the street. Uh, the graduation shooting. But God can, God can stop this. This is only a spirit. We're going to ask our bishop if he would give us a short, short prayer because we're going to turn out. And we thank our uh, sister. And I thank God because even when I was praying about this, I asked the Lord to give me a certain, because you can't go to McDonald's for less than $20 or $50. So I'm asked, I was asking uh, the Lord to give me a certain number so we can be, so the community can be a blessing to them. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what everybody has done. Oh, yeah. Father, we just come thanking you for all that you've done for us. We pray, Lord, especially for this nation. Father, we know that you are in control. You set up, you take down. You control all things by your power. And Father, we thank you for being God. You ask to look upon those that in places of authority to make decisions. Oh God, that will govern us. Pray God that you will give them the mind to do the right thing. Give them the mind, oh God, to pass the right laws. Oh God, that will bring peace to this country, to this nation, oh God. Have mercy upon us, oh God. We pray for your mercy, oh God, upon this nation. Help us, oh God. Continue to lead us and guide us, oh God. In the past of righteousness, for your name's sake, we give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you, and we call it done now, in Jesus' name. I brought, last weekend, from the IPHC, the denomination I'm part of, last year, we went to the heart of the United States, which is Lebanon, Kansas and went from that spot to every state, every capital, and major historical places all over the United States claiming back the territory for what God intended for us to do. Last Saturday, our denomination did the same thing at Hopkins, South Carolina, the center of South Carolina. Went to every county, reached out, went to the state house, and prayed the glory down in the state house last week. And today I just feel we've got to do exactly that. Bad things have happened in America, and I'm not going to take up the time. I'm going to do this. 
Bad things have happened in America, but that was not God's intention. When God sent people across here to bring them into a new country where they would have freedom of religion, it was never to enslave anyone. As our brothers and sisters have said, greed God in the way of it all. But God's intention, and I believe today, I just want to apply the elements that God wants us to, to this ground here today, just like we have done all over this state, what we're going to do in every district of this state, what we're going to do in every church ground that will allow us to come on there. We are claiming back what God wants to do in our nation by cleansing it. So I'm going to ask Brother Martin or 81, one of y'all, to come do this as I begin to declare and decree. This is my prayer. Violence will go when we return the land to what God intended for it to be. And when that happens, yes, you'll have to do it in the, in the soil behind us. And so as you, this is not your normal prayer. This is not my normal way of praying. Okay. But I believe, first of all this, we're going to apply. What we are going to use is grape juice representing the wine, the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That first and foremost, when they came across those waters so many years ago, the intention of it was to have the freedom to worship Jesus Christ our Savior. And I noticed while we sang this, this evening, we all could sing the songs of God together because we know we are have one God. He is our Savior, and we lean heavily upon Him. So we decree and declare, as y'all begin to pour it, we decree and declare that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins, that while we were still sinners, that Jesus died for us, that his word declares that his sacrifice has brought everything under his name. There is no other name by which men can be saved. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth. Your name, Jesus, has full authority, and we cry out to you that in your name that you will redeem this earth, you will redeem this nation, you will redeem this state, and you will redeem this county in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up the water to you right now. John 7, 38 says that the out of the bell out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. Father, today we decree and declare that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. That in these last days, that you pouring out your spirit upon all flesh, we decree and declare today that the Holy Spirit sweep through us for people, and that the land and the atmosphere will be cleansed of the wickedness and the glory of the Lord will cover the earth again. We apply the salt to the earth because you said to us that we are the salt of the earth. Jesus, you said we are a preservative. You said salt is a healer and it is a seasoning there, there with to make things taste well. We are sent to be all of that into the earth. Father, we decree and declare this day that this nation will again rise with the salt of the DNA of the Heavenly Father who created it and made it and sent us all here that the glory of the Lord shall fill this place again. That we will be the sweetness of the Lord and this land will be filled with healing and preservation in its atmosphere. We apply, oh, we apply the oil, okay? The oil is used to anoint the anointed. Woo! I want to get a little glory in here. The oil is used to anoint the anointed. It is used to make known in the natural what God has established in the spiritual. Therefore, we decree and declare today that the chosen of the Lord, the anointed ministers of our land, the anointed lay persons in every church will rise up in the anointing and the favor of God upon their lives to bring to pass the work of God in our midst. I'm saying, church, it's time for us to arise. Hallelujah. And last we come in the fire. Oh, no. We've got to just light this one. And you may have to just hold it up, Eddie, because I don't think I can lay it on the ground right now. But John said, Jesus did not come to baptize you with water. 
but he came to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So we decree and we declare that the righteous will stand in the fire of the Lord, not in the judgment, not in condemnation, but a righteous force of God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy upon a sick and a dying world. Let the fire of the Lord burn out every evil work in us all so that God may rise and be glorified in us all. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we decree and we declare that the land of America shall once again, as the Christian rises up, Lord, your voice will be the loudest voice we hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear it one more time. Hallelujah. 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 Being here together is what Juneteenth is about. Let us bow our heads as we prepare to receive the food that has been prepared for us. Lord, may you watch over us as we continue to do the work and the will that you've asked us to do. Lord, we ask that you bless the hands that prepared the food. We, bless, we ask that you continue to bless Brother Cunningham and those who put this program together so that it continues to be an annual event. Lord, we ask that all those who are here today take the message of goodness, love, and unity back out into the community for which they serve and where they come from. And Lord, we ask on this day that you continue to give us health and strength and courage to be who you've called us to be in this great nation. Amen. Amen. I apologize. I apologize. We cannot leave until Sharon has word. I apologize. Uh, either Sharon or Lynn. Everybody enjoy yourself.